everyone welcome back as you will see in our first video we haven't been on here for a little over a week and that's there's a lot of things that's been going on so we are doing two back to back the first one that you are, are going to see is going to have Eric and Gabrielle in it they're going to be doing candy testing from around the world again I was out of it I'm having problems with my eyes I'm sure you probably noticed in one of the videos I'm, I'm doing this weird goofy thing with my eyes. No, I'm not just goofy. It's I have eye problems. Um, I, I like you a lot. I'm, I might be flirting with you. I don't know. But no, it's my eye problem. But anyhow, um, you'll, you'll see that one first. And then this one you're going to see. This one here, the topic's going to be uh, Cody and Santori. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, Satori. Yeah. Yeah. You said Santori. I thought I said Satori. No, you said Santori. Oh, well, it's Satori. Eric's the witness this oh, time. I'm sorry. It's Cody and Satori. We'll get into that in a couple minutes. But before we start on that topic there, we're going to have Gabriella give her fun state facts, and then we'll get into the topic on hand. All right. So the very first state fact. Fact. So Woo! is Kansas is often described as flat as a pancake. So in 2003, geographers tested this theory using a digital model of IHOP pancake. Turns out Kansas is even flatter. Bada boom. Bada boom. Bada boom. The second fact is you can thank Kentucky for 20 seconds of grinning embarrassment every year. Originally known as Good Morning to All, the happy birthday song was written in Louisville, by Sil Sisters Milford, Silsters, Silsters, by the Silster Milford and Party Hill in 1893. This is going to be a fun night, everyone. I guess we're going to talk about like this for the rest of the night. <laughs> All right. And the third one, if you understood the last one, is Louisiana is the only state whose legal system is based on the Napoleonic Code. All other fall all other <laughs> all others follow English common law. Bada boom. Those are pretty cool. So okay, let's get back to our topic on hand. Um, we usually little. don't like to tie in our lurking spirits with our current channel, but it kind of does tie in. So if you haven't caught us here, hopefully you caught us on the lurking spirits. That's also on YouTube. Um, the subject in hand, like I said, is going to be Cody and Satori. I'm going to let Gabriella tell you, if she wants, uh, who Cody and Satori is and why we're discussing this topic tonight. All right. Cody and Satori are the housekeepers of the Conjuring House, and they basically watch it and make sure that everything goes great. Well, they're also known for their ability to grab each other's hands or arms or something and have any spirit communicate with them no matter where they are and the way that these spirits are communicating with them is through an alphabetical thing that they do they're like a, a b c d and then it knocks f for that letter that it wants them to know to spell out a word or a sentence and um, it's very controversial right now because there's the half that don't believe them and then there's the half that do believe them. Now, uh... Let me take that one. Yeah. What kind of brought this to a head recently is there was a prior episode. Um, I, I know I'm going to probably offend some people that are Sam and Colby fans, but I'm not real big fan of theirs. But they were at the Conjuring House, and Cody and Satori did their little thing when they were there, made them cry, and brought up some very personal information about some family and everything to them. And then Project Fear, which is one of our favorites. We, we really like Project Fear and we like Twin Paranormal, which we discussed before. Um, they were there recently and it kind of caused a big controversy because 
Project Fear, as anybody knows, if you're a fan of theirs, they'll usually go to a location, they'll investigate, and then the second part of their investigation, they will spend, they'll separate into different parts of wherever they're investigating, and they'll sleep over and see what they catch. Well, the first two episodes of Project Fear was kind of more or less almost focused on Cody and Satori and their abilities. Now, um, in the very first episode, uh, Dakota and I believe Tanner was kind of called out on the episode. And a lot of people that are fans of Project Fear, of course, if you're an avid fan, you're going to stay a fan no matter what. But some of them kind of upset because... There was a lot of controversial things involving Cody and Satori that happened there. And if you watched their third part, which was a set-down interview with Cody and Satori, that's when you're going to find out exactly why there's even more controversy. And Gabrielle and I, we watched it very closely. We were kind of not, we kind of liked Cody and Satori. They are very likable, so we're not trying to diss them or anything. They're very, very likable people. But when we watched the last episode, even we started becoming skeptical of them. And there's several reasons why. And I'm going to let Gabriella start on that because you guys are probably tired of hearing me talking a lot. So I'll let Gabriella kind of tap into that and then I can jump in when she wants me to. So basically, there has, uh, like I said, it's very controversial right now. There's the half that believes them and the half that doesn't. And like Mom just said, we used to be firm believers like we were like oh this is so cool i'm so glad that they're showing this to people and that they're trying to get people to believe them and and whatnot and so on and so forth tell them exactly well you did tell them what they do you did i mean but with the foot tapping and everything and that too what the sounds of footsteps and yeah so when they contact these spirits through each other's uh body energy when they touch each other um, the spirits are supposed to, you're supposed to be able to hear them walk in different areas of the house and, um, and they'll knock and everything else. It's, it's almost like they're like, oh, where did you go? And then it, it sounds like it's walking away, but, um, we are starting to become not believers or very skeptical of them now because of the third episode of the third episode now the third episode they're talking and interviewing cody and satori and asking them all these different things about their ability well one of them that really crossed um like put it at the edge of the fence for us was that, um, <laughs> Satori, they asked Satori if she would be willing, or if they would be willing, to take off their shoes and socks for proof that maybe it's th not their, um, to prove that it's not their, like, bones cracking or joints popping or... Or anything inside the shoe that could be making noise. Well, she kept on being very like weird about it. And she kept on saying, "Oh, I don't, I don't want the uh, foot fetish um, community out there to see my feet." And I'm just really weird about my feet. And then she said, "Well, actually, you know what? We can do it off camera sometime." Maybe. Yeah, she said, "Maybe we can do it off camera sometime." And you can see where uh, Dakota was really trying to get her to show it on camera. He was like, well, how about we do it on camera? How about we yeah. do it in, like, the next episode on camera? And then she, she kind of just was getting really weird about it. And that was, like, one of the very first things that we were kind of like, okay, this is weird. You kind of got to give Dakota a hand on that because he started out because after that third episode... I guess a lot of people started writing in and contacting the the Fear Club fan club or whatever and I started contacting them and said, wait a minute. The very first thing that kind of drew Dakota's and them attention was there was some these no, these were people from the internet that were contacting them and one of the very first things that they brought up was, Hey, me and some of my friends, um, 
we were able to take off our shoes and we even just had socks on we were able to recreate exactly the same signs that they were doing and they could even change the how deep or how heavy the footsteps was the knocks and or how light it was and they were in just socks and that's yes. kind of the first thing that kind of brought up this controversy. Basically what they did was, you know how you can snap your fingers like this? You can do that with your toes too. It's really weird and no, I'm not showing you. <laughs> um, you can snap Show your... me, Gabriella, show me. I have a weird thing with my feet too. She's like a monkey. She I, can pick up anything. Yeah, I can pick up anything with my feet. I can do pretty much anything with my feet if I tried, but that's really gross. And I'm sorry for any of you people out there, but you're not seeing my feet. Um, basically you can snap with your fingers like this, well you can do that with your toes too, but it's like hitting the bottom of your shoe. So obviously if you have no shoes on, it'll still make that sound with your, um, with your skin rubbing together and you can kind of hear it, but with shoes and socks on, it's going to hit the bottom of the thing like that. And it's going to yeah. sound like footsteps. Yeah. And obviously the more you like, the harder you flick it, the louder it's going to get. The lower you flick it, the lower the, the sound's going to get. Well, like mom said, one of the people on um, the Fear Club, they decided to make a video showing, and it sounded almost exactly, exactly the yep. same. Yeah. Um, that they could do this, and that's why we need proof that they're, we need proof of them without shoes And you would on. think that if you have a chance to prove your abilities, to prove yourself, I know if I was in that situation, even though if I'm not comfortable showing my feet, and they'd say, hey, you want to do that right now? I'd say, heck yeah, you know, if it's going to prove my point... I'll, I'll do it, but she it was just very odd. Another thing, and I'll bring it up and Gabriella can jump in, was what kind of caught my attention first. They asked Cody and Satori, they said, who started this? Who came up with this idea? Mm -hmm. And Satori immediately, which she's the talker of the two, and she admitted that. And like I said, we're not trying to bash them. I, I, I think they're both very, very nice people. It's just you kind of have to question now, especially after a couple of things that we're going to mention. The ABC, she said, oh, I'm going to take credit for that. And Cody hesitated for a second, and he looked at her. He said, yeah, I'm going to give her full credit for it. But if you go back on his very first investigation... Um, I get. was it before or after he was part of It Taft? was before. It was when he was very, very young, when he was just starting. No, before started. or after he was part of TAPS. No, he was, that's what I'm saying. It was when he very first started investigating. He wasn't okay. even with TAPS so at that point. So his very first investigation with one of his buddies, um, his buddy, you could hear in the background saying, hey, do that alphabet thing. What is, what is those dogs tonight? Okay, sorry folks. Alright, so, um, you could hear one of his buddies in the background saying, hey, do that alphabet thing that you always do, you know, the A, B, C thing, and then he started doing the A, B, C, and waiting for a knock, and ironically, it worked for him in that video too, without Satori. Yep, yep, and, and they both admitted that. Satori came up with this idea, but right there was a video clip proven. Wait a minute. No, Satori didn't come up with this. He did it years ago before he even met Satori or the TAPS group. And then another thing, which I will bring up because I thought it was very freaking weird, was um, Dakota had this one person share a Reddit post. The Reddit post said something like, um... Some of the devices that uh, Cody made when he was selling uh, ghost equipment were... Satori said that they were cat balls. She said that they were just cat balls. Yeah, she chuckled and said, oh, he was only selling cat balls. Yeah, when they asked him this. I mean, them this. And she was like, oh, they're just cat balls. Well, this person went back on this Reddit post, and the Reddit post said that he made 
devices that have to do with audio and he's an audio engineering technician on his Facebook page it says that or it did say that I don't know if it says that anymore but I need to find the post and if you watch that video clip that this person showed the video clip you didn't see I I didn't personally did not see any cat balls around him whatsoever but he was holding something with like a wire that on it in the video clip so for somebody that was only selling cat balls he sure had some equipment in there that he was very familiar with that can have easily been used somehow. He's not a stupid guy. Satori nor Cody, they're, neither one of them are stupid. And I, and I do admire them because, I mean, they're, like I said again, I can't say it enough. They're very, very nice people. And I really like the TAPS team a lot, which is... For those of who you don't know, Jason Hawes from TAPS is Satori's father. And Cody and Satori now, Cody joined TAPS at one point, asked Satori out, they started dating, they're now engaged, and they somehow came up with this thing that they were doing with the ABCs and that. But they're, they're very, very nice people. It's just that with some of this stuff coming up, you have to wonder what's going on. And that definitely was not cat balls that he had in that business that he had. All right, hold on. Give me a second. That's not it. And if you have any opinions yourself, Please, please, please. So far, we haven't gotten any comments. I don't know if, you know, if, if you, even if you don't like our videos or if you think there's something that we can do to improve it, we are open for any kind of comments. Please put them down, you know. I mean, just like we said a thousand times before, just be respectful to us because we're doing what we do because we like it and, and to help you in any way, bring up topics and and um, different things like that that we feel you may be interested in, but we would like you to participate. And as we said, sometime in the future, we may be picking out fans and saying, hey, congratulations, you're going to win a, a mug or you're going to win a cap, something. You know, we're, you know, we will definitely show your appreciation, our appreciation to you um, for comments and joining in on our videos and viewing. Sorry I'm taking so long, just give me a second. Hello, <laughs> hello. I don't know when Cody and Satori actually started. Gabriella said they're the housekeepers. They're housekeepers, but they're also like tour guides. And from the understanding that I have that this ABC method that they do, which um, Dakota calls it the, um, what is, what's the method that he calls it? Cody and Satori. The CAS method. He calls, he, he dubbed it the CAS, C-A-S method. And, um, they don't do this every time somebody goes and visits the conjuring house. They seem like they only do it for, like, select people, like, uh, without being redundant. They said it, I mean, they done it when Sam and Colby were there. They did it when Fear, uh, uh, Project Fear was there. I'm not sure. I think there was another, I don't know if it was, um, what was the other one? The one that had um, Colin in. I can't remember what his destiny, no. Uh, Paranormal Files. Paranormal Files with Colin. And it, he's the big blonde guy. I'm sorry, I don't know what his last name is. But I think that maybe they did it when he was there. I'm not sure. But I remember I, I when uh, Taps first came out, I was a big fan. And I watched them all the time. And there was one episode in particular that um, uh, Cody and Satori was in. And they were in an upstairs room. And there was a radiator on the one wall. I believe, and they were doing that, and it said something about a pen or a note or something, and they found a pen or something in the floor, but I remember seeing them back at that time, so, but Gabriella found that now. So, this Reddit post right here is the one that I was talking about. Um, this guy, basically, he bought one of Destex or Cody's 
devices which were supposed to have been a cat ball because he did sell cat balls but he claimed that they were modified and they they weren't just exactly cat balls well this dude put it to the test so he has this long paragraph and like story about how he contacted cody and was trying to find information about him to see if he's like a scam artist or if he's done this before or if anybody else has had any issues with um, him selling cat balls that looked just like normal cat balls and didn't have anything modified on them. Well, on this thing, it says, on his Facebook page, he states he specializes in audio and investigation technology with knowledge in electronics and physics. So, um, that's weird if he doesn't have anything to do with the sounds that are coming from... And he's only selling cat balls. Yeah, and he's only selling cat balls. Which also, if you go further down on the page, does that look th what uh, that look like a cat ball to you? Because to me, that doesn't look like a cat ball. Well, there was just a lot of suspicious things on there too. There was at one point they were standing, and apparently they talked to Abigail, which is one of the residents spirit residents of the house and they were talking and then just out of the blue you could see flashing up on the fireplace and just out of the blue for no reason nobody said anything but just for out of the blue for no reason she goes oh that's just my phone up on the fireplace and even like i believe if you look at like dakota's and chelsea's and them's face they're like now, there could be a reason. It could be because she thought that the infrared light was going to interact yeah. with her phone. So she had to make it known that it was up there. But since nobody said anything about it, like, flashing up there to begin with, there's no reason for her to say, oh, don't worry, that's just my phone up there. Well, there's another big, big, big thing that kind of flagged for me and Gabriella and a lot of Project Fears viewers. And what it was, was in the very first episode when Dakota's grandfather came through. If you're watching the episode, Chelsea doesn't react. Dakota gets very, very emotional. Now, it could be just because Dakota could have been close to his grandfather, but Chelsea wasn't. But Dakota said he honestly didn't know what his grandfather's first name was. So the name, I believe it was Tom, came through. And um, like I said, Chelsea didn't act. But Dakota had to call up his or contact his mother, I believe, to find out who Tom was. And here they found out it was his grandfather, Bucky. His grandfather always wanted... Dakota said everybody in the family only knew him as Bucky. But ironically, this spirit came through as his grandfather. Now, Dakota brought this up, and he says, well... He said, to be fair, he said, if you go on my mother's Facebook page, you can find out all, all this info, like including, I, he brought, the spirit supposedly brought up about cigars, cigar. have a cigar on me, and made Dakota smoke, yeah, yeah, it was smoke, like, smoke a, cigar a cigar on me. for me or something like that. And Dakota said on his, his mother's Facebook page, she mentioned stuff like that. But Gabrielle and I was talking about this supposed Bucky thing, if a spirit's going to come through with an actual spirit and it's trying to contact a family, it's going to come through as the name that the family knows it by. Not, I mean, if Dakota never even knew what his grandfather's first name is, why would it come through as Bucky? But Gabriella has a philosophy on that, and I 100% agree with her. So my philosophy is that Abigail might not be a good spirit. It could be a demon that is still in the conjuring house that's trying to get people at, to be in their most vulnerable state and by doing so is getting names of family members and stuff to break them down to the lowest point to try to take over them now that's if this is legit so if she is legitimately talking to something but that could be the one part of it. My other theory is that, let's say that Abigail is a good spirit. She's getting the information from other spirits, supposedly. So, the information that the other spirits are giving her could be 
oh hey that <laughs> this person's name is this and this is what uh they might know it by or them by and so she's gathering the information and telling them the information that she knows that she doesn't actually know what he goes by or anything like that but i'm starting to think that it's weird to me that every single time that Cody and Satori want to do this with all these influencers that they always end up crying or something happens yeah. in the house and where yeah. it's just so traumatic. It's just too coincidental all the time. And if that's the case, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not there. Then why isn't she, why aren't they willing to do it for anybody that comes if they say, hey, would you do that thing for us? Do they do that for me? I, I don't want to jump to conclusions that I don't know. I'd have to look into it. But, like, say we went there. We would love to go to Conjuring House. Would they be willing to try that with us? Because with me in particular, you're not going to find anything personal on my Facebook about anything in my house, anything in my family, other than my family itself. So it'd be quite interesting. And the other interesting thing about it is this ABC method. Gabriella and I tried that in her bedroom down at our old house. And we did have a little bit of luck with it, but we kind of did it a little bit differently. We didn't hold hands or anything. We kind of... We didn't do, like, the A... Yeah. We kind of did, like, the yeah. A, B, C, but it was kind of, like, uh, slower. It wasn't, like, A, B, C, D, E, F. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It was slower, and we were, like, our... But it was with the flashlight. And we did, we, we did have some results, but the whole thing is, is, I mean, there's just, I mean, she started talking about, Satori started talking about that the, I, I wish I could remember their name, I'd have to look them up, I did have the, and if, if you're doubting anything that we're saying, if you go on Project Fear under their last episode where they were interviewing, the whole transcript is there that you can see. But anything that we're discussing right now, you can easily pull up the transcript and, and find or it. Or just watch the video. But she was talking about these three women years ago that were really, really famous. And oh, they were doing seances and stuff like that. And they had knocks on the table and everything like that. But they always wore long dresses and very long like like knee-high socks and and stuff like that and they never let anybody look up under their dress or in their socks or anything like that and eventually somewhere down the line one sister came out and she said yeah she says that we we were just doing that we, popping our joints yeah we were doing that we were making those sounds now satori brought that up and it's almost like she brought that up and she made a fact, she made a point of saying the one sister came out and said, oh yeah, we were faking it. So that kind of made it suspicious too. It's almost like well, she, she was trying to admit it. She defended them. Too. Yeah. She was like, well, they were only doing it for money though, so... And what else did she say? She said something, she She's, defended them in some way. It was like, they were doing some it for money, so... Uh, so you can't blame them or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, it was something on there. Or, again, look up the transcript on Project Fear. Yeah, we're not quoting out. anything. Yeah. But. I, and if we make any errors in anything we say, I mean, definitely, again, make, you know, make a comment on it. But it all it's all in the transcript there. Yeah, I just find it weird how she brings up these three sisters that were caught faking it after, well, not caught, but were told that they were faking it from the one sister and then she decides to defend them even though that they are frauds like you would think she would be like yeah I think that was wrong they should have uh, even if it was for money they should have came out earlier and said like hey we're faking it we're sorry that this was just a publicity stunt but no she defended it yeah. And it's like we said, you know, with us having our own paranormal group called Lurking Spirits, we go out of our way. Anything we do, we, and, and I noticed Project, I mean, Twin Paranormal does the same thing. They'll go out of their way and we'll go out of our way to try to debunk anything first. We'll, if we, we, something we hear sound or that, we'll go and we'll see if there's something that could have made that sound or we could see find out if it was one of us that made that sound you know if, if you're going to be a good paranormal investigator you're going to try to debunk everything before you try to prove everything and there's some things that you just can't possibly debunk but you know that's what a good 
paranormal investigator does. So they will try to debunk everything first. And it's like with them, if it was me again, which I said this at the beginning of the video, if somebody said, hey, I want you to take your socks off to prove that you're not doing something with your feet, I'm going to take my socks off. I might have the ugliest, creepiest, yucky, old, smelly feet ever, but if it's going to prove that I'm legit, I'm going to take my shoes off and I'm going to prove it right there on camera so that I can dismiss all those myths So hey, they're just faking everything. I know, I would pr try to prove everything. I would be like... I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, it's all those creepy foot fetish people out there. No. I'd be... Like, let's say that Eleven from Stranger Things is real. And she was making these videos on the internet and told everybody that she had these abilities where she has uh, telepathy. Or, not telepathy. What's it called? Telekinesis? Yeah. She has telekinesis where she can literally move anything with her mind. And people are like, oh, that's fake. And then some people are like, wow, that's so cool. Uh, how do you do that? She would go out of her way. I'm almost positive that she would go out of her way and be like, hey, I actually do know how to do this. Here's the proof. I'll show it to you right now. No uh, cuts in video or anything. She would prove it and it would be there. But, but we're getting, getting back to, like, the investigators and that, too. Like, like Gabriella said before, we're big fans of Cody and Satori. Well, I still like them. I'm not going to say I don't like them. They're, they are nice people. But they really, really put big question marks after you see that, that video, that interview with, the, with Project Fear. And you can almost look at Dakota and the rest of the crew and kind of be like, I'm, are I think they, skeptical do now. they believe yeah, them now? I don't think they do. Because they're not really doing much to prove that they this is legit anymore. And they're not really, they're not avoiding the questions, but they're kind of like no, we brushing them we away. We watch everybody. We, we started like way back when, when um, Ghost Hunters first came out, the TAPS unit. And I remember one episode, now there's been some controversy somewhere, I, I have not done research on it, where that the TAPS might have done a little questionable thing. Um, but I do remember the one episode particular that I watched on TAPS, they went into this place. And I, I don't, I think it was a place of business. And they were doing investigating and all this stuff started happening. And that ironically, Jason and his crew found out that the owners of that business had set up all these things to go off and to happen and Jason Hawes was pissed. He says, I'm going to tell you right now we have no problem coming to your place of business and doing an investigation, but if you pull that kind of crap off on me when we're trying to do an honest investigation, we will not do that and we will expose you doing, you know, we, we don't go for that kind of crap. Well, what boggles my mind is, is we watch, like I said, we watch a lot. We even watch foreign, you know, like Canadian and English and, you know, British people, you know, paranormal experts and everything. And what bothers me is Zach Bagan's Ghost Adventures. This guy has been on. Now, I'm not saying when he first started out, I think he was okay. But after he got into, I think, about his fifth year and it started getting to his head, the guy became very egotistical and he started, he fakes shit like crazy. And if you fall for him, I'm sorry. The guy is so fake and he keeps on going and going and going. And he's at the point where he's so conceited and so disgusting and he has to take run of the show. It's, if you don't do it his way, you get told about it, and he'll actually belittle you, he'll yell at you, he'll shout at you. He's just disgraceful how he treats his uh, co-investigators. Co, uh, I totally agree. Um, he, even his investigators have come out and said, he made me do this, and we're quitting because uh, he... We found out that he was faking. And he bullies. And he bullies. Mm -hmm. He literally will lock uh, Aaron. I don't think Aaron's still in. 
I don't know. A couple of them left, and a couple. There's, there's so many different articles yeah. saying that don't he know got what to kicked believe. out, yeah. or he left on his own. He's going to expose him for everything that he's done, and then the ones that are like, "Oh no, he hasn't left." And <laughs> so I don't know what to believe. But the last article that I read is that uh, Aaron. You have a little something was on your nose. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I saw this one. And they're like, "What's that?" That's the third. Yeah, they're was, yeah. trying to like ignore it. It's like a fuzz. Or something. Me out. <laughs> no, it was. I could see it, but they wouldn't be able to see it. It was like a fuzz. We'll or see. We'll see. Whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, the last thing that I read or saw or I don't even remember what I think it was an article was that Aaron is going to expose him for all the abuse that he put them 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 well, Nick through. goes with he investigates with another paranormal Eric is Nick does he go with the one that that uh, Katrina or whatever her name was that was with Jack Osborne don't they investigate together sometimes, or am I wrong? Uh, uh, no, you're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, a part of it, he investigates with Katrina and Jack. It's, um, it's called Paranormal Lockdown. That's where they investigate. That's what I thought. So Nick show. Nick Roth, I think his name is. Him and Katrina, I think her name's like Leadman or something uh, like uh, that. I think it's Weidman. Weidman, that's what it is. Um, she used to be with Jack Osborne on Portals to Hell and, and the Osborne his investigate which i do like the way he investigates too with if you watch one of his i'm kind of swaying off uh his mother kind of got into a sticky wicket when he took her but anyhow nick groff has been with her now on that paranormal lockdown and um and it's it seems like he is breaking away now i don't know i i've seen him also on some episodes i refuse to watch zach bagans on anything because the guy literally gets possessed on every episode and we've noticed this from years ago that um he'll go and i wonder if anything's going to happen and as soon as he says that ironically something happens and it's just he's so fake and people like him and i don't know women out there they think that he's so attractive and so sexy and so hot well he's disgusting i'm sorry i like the wraith brothers the Tennessee Wraith Boys, I like them. Oh, they're pretty cool. And uh, that the gadgets that the younger brother comes up with on there is just, oh my goodness, some of the stuff that they caught is amazing. But um, again, I'm swaying off the subject at hand. But um, yeah, you would think with everything surrounding Cody and Satori that they would hurry and jump at any kind of opportunity they could get to, to, that they could do to prove themselves legit. But I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. They're not giving an yeah. ounce of proof to yeah. anybody. Yeah. And, like, on the Sam and Colby episode, they had them go to different places. And uh, that's another thing that kind of, like, swayed us from the direction. She When he, Dakota asked her, um, <laughs> well, do you think the spirits would like to talk to us? Uh, now, if you, or something like that, and she's like, oh, oh no, it was, do you think that we could talk to the spirit now, or something, if, uh, I can't it? remember how that went. It was something on the, on that order, and she was like, oh, it's up to the spirits, but it, supposedly, every time that they hold arms or touch hands or something, the spirits come to them. And the spirits must have been in a really good mood when on Sam and Colby's episode yeah. because they literally drove them out to the middle of fucking nowhere in an abandoned yeah. building and had them do the same thing. And ironically, it was the same noise. And, and that's the other big the question mark on it is, um, as paranormal investigators ourselves, we're not going to guarantee our viewers that something is going to happen on every any every single investigation that we go. There's been investigations where where they're like we're where they're two two or three hours and we don't get anything where they're like, oh geez, we're gonna have to come up with something, you know, to show on there. Hopefully something happens and then maybe like the second half we might only get an E V P or something. We've had to scratch some videos and that because we literally had nothing to show 
or we did go to one little tiny graveyard down in South Carolina, and it was a very peaceful, family-oriented graveyard. Oh, we didn't nice. really catch anything on there. There was the spirits come through, and all they told us was that they were all happy. They were all family in it. They visited each other among the graves. You know, they were like one little happy family in there that... Please just let us rest in peace. Let us be at peace. And so we said, well, thank you for communicating with us. And we left. And and um, it was a rather peaceful but kind of like boring video. But it was it made you feel good inside because, you know, we, we didn't bother them. But um, you're not going to get something everywhere you go. I'm sorry. My, my kids just not too long ago went, there's a furnace. It's an outside. I think it had something to do with... Um, coal or something I, I, I don't can't remember what kind of furnace it is but they went there and nothing happened time before that when they went there they had activity like crazy but the last time they went there was nothing so they come back and they said mom we, we don't have nothing to show or we would have had a video out recently now we do have an investigation coming up this saturday um if you have to watch our lurking spirits channel to I'm see excited. we're real excited about it um we're told that the place is full of activity. We're hoping we can catch some good evidence. The last place we went to, there was a lot that happened. Um, but one of the big claims, and we're trying to come up and salvage some of the video, one of the big claims of that one was that um, their audio equipment got affected a lot. Ironically, when Abby, the next day when we went to do the editing and seeing what we caught and everything, there was no audio on any of the video whatsoever. Even the body cam that Eric had on, there was audio for the first half when, and there was nothing on it. But the second half, the audio completely got corrupted on it. So the only good thing is I do have an EVP that I caught that I asked the spirit. I said, is there somebody here with us today or whatever? And we got a very, very clear, plain yes. Um... And, you know, but we're not going to say, you know, everywhere we go, we're going to get EVPs and we're going to get this and we're going to get that. Um, but that kind of proved the claim on that one. And like I said, Abby's still trying to salvage. Well, that's like a new, um, this is kind of off trail, but still on trail. It's like off the side of it a little bit. Um, my sister showed us a new YouTuber that we haven't seen before. And mm. we saw a few videos of his, and we were like, oh my gosh, the evidence this man captures is just incredible. incredible. And there was even one where he, it looked like he got yanked back or pushed backwards or something, and he was supposedly out for like 10 minutes or so. Well, we kept on watching his videos because we were like, well, this is just hey, this crazy. Is cool. We were like, this is just crazy. I wish that this could happen to us or that we can, like, capture this type of evidence on our account. And so... Well, we did start getting suspicious because it was like every place we went, something happened. I, that, I brought so, that up. Yeah, I was like, yeah. it is a little weird that everywhere that yeah. he goes, there's supposedly something that happens. But we eventually caught him on a lie because there was one video in particular that had this um, spirit, and it was a full-bodied apparition of a man, or just a body, and it was walking, and it was very slow, but it was like, it was like, it was tall, and it was slow. Well, in another one of his other videos, um, is that exact same figure. Like, nothing changed about it, there was no dimension, uh, differences, there was, it was the same height, it was... It was even the in two different buildings, but the window and the door and everything else were like the shadow in that went. The shadow was the same shape, same size, it moved the same, or ironically went. It was the same window, it was the exact same clip, but he just put it in, the, in another video. So we were There's, like, well, um, yeah, excuse me, didn't we see that yeah. one and They're the exact already? same, yep. But my whole point about this, bringing that up, is that since we're a paranormal investigation group, we're going to do anything in our power to prove that we are not faking it. That we are not here for public publicity. Plub. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> publicity stunts or to just get views or anything like that. We're here to 
actually see if there's an afterlife and if we can help the people in the afterlife and you know just get to know more about what happened there or um the tragedies that might have taken place there or something just all this information that's all we're trying to figure out we're just paranormal investigators mm -hmm. and we've got a lot of good input on ours now we had some you know critique which we take which we know ourselves there's five members normally and a lot of times we've had before recently we worked four members we had a habit of like a lot of talking and everything and a lot of people said you guys are talking over each other and that it's not like it was done intentionally it's just the way that one person was asking the other person happened to you know and when you're in a new environment and you have all these crazy things happening of course you're going to get up um excited and you're going to want to ask it more questions and not really i'm not saying not care about the other members but kind of brush them away that way you can ask the question that you're about to ask to the spirit and hoping that it would hear you instead of somebody else or vice versa because you're just so excited. And we've had a lot of discussions about this. We actually did have a discussion topic. Oh, we've on, had plenty of discussions. So, I mean, we we came to a conclusion how we're going to change some of our investigating, not the way we do it itself as far as what we use and stuff, but as far as who's talking, what room, and to make it better for our viewers. So if you are one of our Lurking Spirits viewers, it's going to get better, I, I promise you. Um, but there is another person, and I'm not going to say where this person is from, and I don't personally know this person, but was showing us some of the video clip. Well, they have videos out, but on their videos, they're showing and playing like an EVP or saying this happened and that happened. But they're not showing, like, if we get an EVP, we try to say where the EVP is captured. It'll be on film, and then we can play it again at the end for somebody if they need and, and kind of highlight what we thought it, it said. And you can jump in and say what you thought it said. Well, this person was sitting there just talking like we are now and says, okay, I got this EVP and played the EVP while... How do we know that he didn't have somebody in his house or something doing that EVP or, you know, how do we know it was at that particular location? Yeah. You you have to show where this EVP happened and what you were doing. You can't just come up and, with an EVP recorder and say, hey, I got this. That would be like, because you don't know if it was that person that spoke into the microphone or or if they like try to change their voice or or something and especially if you don't if you're not familiar with that person if it's somebody like a group like like again twin paranormal project fear or something like that then you know maybe they could get away with it because you're so familiar with their work but when you're somebody even like us we're still we're only in our we're going in our second year here now even like us, you're go we're going to want to prove ourselves every chance we get. We're not going to want to just, I have that EVP right now. I could play for you that where you can clearly hear yes, but I'm not going to do it because it shows up on that video. And But even though we don't have audio, you can see where I pulled out the recorder and we can. So it's just, you know, you go out of your way to try to debunk stuff and or, or to prove yourself legit. Um it just there's just too many red flags that was on that you really have to watch that there's a lot of other ones that I seen people were interviewing them I don't we haven't watched any of them yet I, I don't know if in a way I kind of want maybe want to watch one or two of them just to see what else comes up but I'm convinced like I like the guy I, I, I like them there's but. one big major problem that I have is if there's a team and yeah, he might be a little shy or he might just not want to talk as much. Why does she have to, she kind of like interrupts him. Like he'll be saying something or he'll kind of only say a little bit of something and then she's like, oh yeah, but blah, 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 blah. She like takes over. If they're a team, why don't they speak together or why doesn't he say something more and then she says something she like talks the whole time <coughs> towards whatever is happening he barely got to say anything about his des tech 
she kept on saying that it was only cat balls, mm -hmm. which we all know is wrong because he's an audio engineering technician according to his Facebook back then. Don't know if that's, again, don't know if that's now, but back then, and they have proof of it. So, well, that's like with our videos here. I know a lot of people think, well, why does a mother talk all the time? Why doesn't Gabriella talk more? Gabriella and I discuss this ahead of time, and we talk, we discuss who's going to talk and who's not, and we 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 interrupt each other on occasion, but we apologize, and we know each other's clicks. Mm -hmm. But she knows I'm not going to over talk her. I know she's not going to over talk me. Now, if we were in an interview, though, somebody were to interview me and Gabriella we would only respond and not interrupt or talk like we are now. We would make sure that she got her equal time the same as me. There would not be, hey, hey, Diane's just talking and talking and talking and talking. Poor Gabriella is not already saying anything. No, it wouldn't be that way. But with our, our video here, this is how we discuss this ahead of time. You smell like um, cinnamon. Why would I smell like cinnamon? I don't know. You did. You sure that it's not like those cinnamon. cinnamon things back there? No, because it was when you, like, did I that. Don't know. See, that's cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> then I smell like cinnamon. I like to smell like cinnamon. But anyhow, getting back to subject on hand. But that's Sorry. kind of how, um, I don't know if there's anything else we want to discuss with them. Is there any? Um, I think that's all. Oh. No, it's not. Uh, I think we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but it was kind of very vaguely. It was when he asked her, um, like, people think that she and her and Co Cody, oh my gosh, I can't speak tonight, I swear. Her and Cody are, they find this information online and then they memorize it and then they say it to whoever mm. they're saying. Well, he's like, so, um, we found out that if you search any of this, you can find it online. And then she had to go on and say, well, um, I wonder if we didn't make that video, if you would have been able to find that online, or, um, and you expect me to, uh, remember s something about somebody's family when I can barely remember my name. Yeah, and I think Tanner said you'd almost have to have a photographic memory, which, yes and no. If you got that information and had it, say, like, in this, like, notebook that I have here in front of me, if you had that information there and you know you're going to be doing a session with somebody like Project Fear, you can study that stuff, and you can I mean, you can pre-program. You can study you can. it, and you don't need a photographic memory. But the thing that she said that kind of rubbed me the wrong mm -hmm. way was when she said, "Oh, uh, you said you have to have a, you pretty much have to have a photographic memory." Well, it can't be me, can't be me because I don't, um, because I can barely remember my name or something like that. She like immediately yeah. stopped stopped it right then yeah. and there when he asked the question and a normal person would be like very calmly and would be like um well can't be me because you know i have i think on. i would respond and say well yeah people can do that but i i don't stoop to that where i have to study and program myself she could have said it in a different know, way but yeah, the way that she chose yeah. to say it was Oh, it's not me because I can barely remember my name. What kind of a normal person would say something like that? Well, that's the whole thing with the foot fetish thing. Like, I don't care how ugly your feet are. You can have monkey toes. I don't care. Or, you like, you tell Abby that witch she toes. has <laughs> witch toes and stuff. That, I don't care. If, if you want the, your, your, and, you, <coughs> excuse me. If you want your viewing audience to believe what you say you're gonna you're gonna do what you can to prove yourself legit now she's saying she said after that too she says well i don't care because even if i do prove myself there's still going to be those people that aren't going to believe me anyhow 
Well, that's true. I mean, it is true. But still, for your own peace of mind and for the people that are there, like Project Fear, you would think you want, would want that to do it for them. That are trying to believe yeah. you, that actually do believe you. Like Mom said, you would think that you would try you would your to. very best yeah. to find any way possible to prove your innocence. Yeah. But they're not. Yeah. It's it just like, again, you know, they're, they're nice people. They're very likable. But it's just, um, there were so many red flags, so much controversy in that last one. I, I liked them. I do. But up until I saw that interview, I kind of thought the second video, kind of like Gabrielle and I looked at each other and went like, oh, there's some suspicious stuff here. But when they did the interview with them and brought up the internet questions and some of the footage and stuff like that, then where they're like, Well, I think oh. most of the questions were from the people from the fear fear squad fear project fear the fear fan club project fear, fear fan. club yeah that's what it's called uh from the fear club most of the questions were from them but there was like a few questions that tanner and alex and uh chelsea, chelsea and dakota all had for them themselves because it involved their family and their what they were told Abigail was saying so well there are a lot of people was questioning too why Chelsea didn't get emotional but Dakota did and it's like I said before like it, it just could be that Dakota was more attached to his grandfather or you know you, you have grandpa's boy or grandpa's girl and you know and she wasn't as attached but the whole thing and like a ton of people brought up is if the grandfather was only known and Dakota didn't even know what his grandfather's real name was only came they only knew him as Bucky but then his real name comes through you kind of wonder if they are legit was it actually Abigail coming through or was it something bad that was pretending to weaken them or was, or, anything at all? or was it just all being made up you know if, hey we don't know what we didn't know that he had a nickname tom's coming through which could have easily been found like dakota said on his mother's facebook page so and one more thing is when they finally did get to talk to cody they kind of backed him in a corner and you can tell when somebody is lying usually because they start to get red faced oh, or they start yeah. to look away or their eyes start to water or you know they just have all these different signs and Cody when they backed him in a corner he was still talking but he was stuttering yeah. his eyes were extremely watery his face was flushed and it looked like he was about to ball like cry his eyes out yeah they were yeah he was he was uncomfortable. It was Let's like they caught way. him in a yeah, lie, yeah. and he had no way to get yeah. out of it. But he somehow swam his way out of it anyway, because... I, I mean, here's another way they could have handled it, and I think you're going to agree with me. They're, they're on a show. They're do, I mean, they're doing videos and that, but it's kind of, they're popular. They're, they're, they are popular, and they're, they're working with The Conjuring House. Who doesn't know about The Conjuring House? They could even say, okay, hey guys, I I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be open. I'm going to be upfront with you. Some of the stuff that we're saying and doing, we're kind of, we're kind of fudging it. We're kind of faking it a little bit. Yeah, there's my clock out again. Some of it, you know, we're fudging it. We're faking it and that. But we're honestly, we can contact, the spirits are contacting us. And, you know, we, we are legit, but... You know, right? We're, we're kind of fudging it a little bit just for your video. I mean, even if it, they said it to them in private or anything, and you know, or something. I mean, you can. I mean, I know damn well, and I have to get back to freaking Ghost Adventures and Zach Bagans. I'm not saying everything that Zach does is fake. I'm sure that he, there's going to be, especially he goes in some nasty ass places. I'm sure there's things that's happens there when he goes. But come on, every freaking episode he's in, he's getting possessed or, or oh, something's coming over me. Oh, I just don't feel good. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Oh, I'm dizzy. Every single episode? Come on. Like, I'm sorry. And the guys, no, I, I don't even want to talk about him because he, 
he disgusts me. He just is the biggest fake on TV, and the guy has all these different channels out with his videos, and I, I'm still trying to figure out why I wouldn't give him. One of the major things that he did that really made me dislike him was he bought this person's museum with all of their stuff in it and claimed that it was all yeah, his yeah. and that he found it on his research and that uh, it was all his and that some of them might not even be haunted and he's claiming that every single one of them is haunted and that it was all him who did it. And he has no respect for anybody. If somebody says, okay, what well, we got this artifact and please don't touch it, what does he do? He goes up and grabs it, and he just totally disrespects everybody. He, he disrespected the Warrens at the War Museum. And the worst part yeah, is, like, is that the person who he bought the museum from had no word in it. There was something that either they signed or he signed to them or something that said that <coughs> he has full control over their museum and they're in possession of their stuff now. So they never got it back. Yeah, yeah. I just, he, he's just, you know, I, I, like I said, if you watched him in his earlier episodes, like maybe in the first five years, he was tolerable. You know, you still even at that point, like, you know, he had a bit, he had an ego, you know, he wanted to start off and, you know, that's good, you know, if you want, want something really bad, go for it. Has it we want hours? ours to go, no. We want to go really, It was. we started, I think, about a little bit after nine. Sorry, continue. Yeah, no, it's been about an hour. We're, we're about right where we should be at. Um, when You know, if you if you want something badly, go for it. You know, he, he likes to do that, and that's good and all. We like what we're doing, and we're hoping that we can keep on building our fan base. And, oh, I mean, but we're not going to go out, and we're not going to start faking stuff, and doing fake apparitions and doing fake EVPs and doing all this bullshit. We want you to be drawn to us because you like what we do, you like what we caught, and you know that we're genuine, that we're going to try to debunk everything we can at, at first and then prove some of the things that we want to try in the future is we want to try, like, if we're in a place where there's steps, we want to take a ball and see if we can get the spirit to push the ball down. Um, we, in our old house, I think she was just about yeah, to mention I it because I have real, yeah, like, telekinetic yeah. thing. Um, in our old house, it was my room. We had a balloon, I think, for Valentine's Day or something, and it literally ducked below the little lip above my door, the door frame, it ducked down and it went in my room and it went to the very back of my room and sat well, in the Well, let's chair. go back. It was in our living room. Now, there's our living room. There's the archway from the living room. That's true. It had to go in there. It had to duck down that archway. It went into our dining room. It had to go it through stayed, the dining room. It was funny because it, it was in the kitchen originally. Nobody touched it. Nobody moved it. We thought that maybe it was the circulation of the fan in the living room, but if let's say that it was, it would have been stuck in that one section. We don't have a fan in our living room. There, no, there was a oh, revolving the, oh, fan. Okay. Oh, okay, I thought you meant the. There, there was a revolving fan in our living room, and um, we thought that that's what it was. But let's say that it is okay. It'd be going around and everything, but it wouldn't, like, duck down. We did down. see it do that at times, too, going around from the fan. Yeah. But, it, like you said, it didn't do that. It ducked down. It went in the living room. Sometimes it got caught in the fan, and so we put it in the dining room. Well, when it was in the dining room, it the fan would still be on, but it wouldn't travel back into the living room. It would go in the corner, and it would stay there until the one day it decided to travel the whole way to my freaking bedroom door, duck down, mm -hmm go into my bedroom and then place itself in my chair and it just stood there the rest of the time and then at one point it was in the chair and we said if there's something here can you move that balloon and it was almost like something grabbed the string and, and it moved from the chair and it moved alongside of the wall and it hovered there for a little bit and you could see it going back and forth and then all of a sudden it traveled back and went right back to her chair it was again. the craziest so, thing that we had ever seen because yeah. we were like like, what's going How? On? Is this yeah. balloon possessed? Yeah. Like, what is happening yeah. here? And the reason why we're bringing balloons up is because we want to try that one, too. Um, because, again, our favorite, Twin Paranormal, they were in this one building, and there was a balloon. And the balloon 
I thought I saw something behind me. It was kind of freaky. Um, the balloon moved in the hallway, went downstairs steps. Instead of going up, because it was another floor, it could have just, balloons should go up, not go down. But it went down, it went around another corner, it went down, and it went under a lip, like a archway. It went under the archway and went into right where this door was, where, ironically, the door was to a room that was supposed to have a lot of activity. So, we want to try a couple things like that in our videos and that, but... Like I said, we do have an investigation coming up this I'm Saturday. I'm so excited for it. So, like, keep us in mind, folks. And, um, again, I, I know we're plugging our other channel, but it's part of us. So, we go to the Lurking Spirits channel. We'll have that investigation on Saturday. Abby will probably start checking it and editing it on Monday. So, that following Friday... Is it Friday or is it Saturday when we release them normally? Uh, It'll either be that following Friday or Saturday. So one week from next Saturday, we should start on a roll again. We're trying to get Portage Museum again, which we were there before. Um, I think it was Friday. I think she released it on Friday, too. I think you're right. And then we're trying. We have a lineup of things that we're trying to get. Now that we're back in Pennsylvania, Spring is around the corner, even though we're having nice weather now. We're going to try to line up even more outside things, abandoned buildings. We're going to try to line up a whole bunch of stuff again and um, and stuff like that. So uh, just keep tuned. Keep tuned on here. Our next video, this one, like I said, we had to do back-to-back, -to -back too. My eyes was bothering me. There was just a lot of things coming up with the dogs. Um, colds, just people just not feeling like they should and different things like that. Um, but this week coming up, we won't have one on Wednesday. Or we'll, Do you want to do another one on Wednesday? It'll depend and, and on Wednesday that. might be a big question mark. We'll see because we have Bean Boozle Challenge that we can do. I didn't get to do the candy one with Abby and get Eric. I mean, Gabriella and Eric. This is Gabriella, not Abby. You know what I'm saying. Because Abby did the last candy challenge with us. That's why I said Abby. Oh, is it? Oh, uh -huh. oh. I cover myself up real good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Anyhow, we'll try and maybe think about doing one on Wednesday and then our, on, our next one on Friday, which I don't know. Maybe we'll do something interesting like horror movies or... Um, uh, maybe we were we were actually going to talk about the whole AT and T cell phone outage slash that's, outage. That's a little um, I just to touch on that for a second. I I am fuming. I they they send me this text saying, "Oh, we are so since you're a valued customer, we appreciate that, and um, you will be seeing your credit on your bill. It probably won't be for two cycles, but there will be a credit, and they're telling me five dollars." Yeah, let me see what mine said. I, I have the message on my phone yet, and I can tell you what I'm gonna read it real quick, and because we'll probably be ending this because we're probably I think we're a little over our. This hour. is what mine says. I don't know if. If this is what you're well, let me not. see. Let me find it. Nope. No, it's not that one. No, that wasn't. Maybe I deleted. Oh it. no, no, it's right there. Cause you can no, that one. Cause you can see where you. Okay. Yep. Back. Yep. Is it the same yet? I think it's the same. Yep. Yeah. So Go ahead and read it, and I'll give you my response to it. It says, it's AT&T. We apologize for Thursday's outage, which may have impacted you. As a valued customer, your connection matters, and we're committed to doing better. To help make it right, we're applying a credit to your account. And then it said details, and you click on it, and it gives you $5 credit. Yeah. And, and the thing that makes me mad about it, there's, they're saying valued customer, and they're telling you this whole $5 credit, but they're saying it might not be for two billing cycles. Here is my response. You are freaking kidding me. $5? That's insane. As a valued customer, I would think that I would be worth more than $5. I've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars for your service and have been a very loyal customer for well over a decade and you offer me a $5 credit that may not even reflect for up to two billing cycles? Are you for real? That's a total insult and a slap in the face. Which that's how I feel about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Just one second. You should try this candy while we're... 
You are not going to tell me that I am a valued customer and we're sorry for what had happened. My husband happened, he, he's, he's a cement truck driver. He was in the middle of a very important load and he needed his phone. He needs his phone on him for his job. And he had all kinds of interruptions. He couldn't contact the people we needed to contact. He couldn't get the information that he needed. It was just total chaos for his job during that day. And this, this company, which I'm a loyal customer, I am. I've been with them, I said over a decade. I think I've been with them for almost 20 years now. And they're telling me that they're going to give me $5. And I might not even see that for two billing cycles. No, I'm sorry. So if that's a topic you want us to get on, which I don't know if we could go for no, a length of time on that one. Yeah, that long. that kind we'll of. But to almost make it. Well, we could go that on that and, and with telemarketers. Everybody loves their telemarketers, and we got now since we have lurking spirits and now we have real talk with Diane and Gabriella. We can answer the phone now saying, uh, Real Talk with D Gabriella and D Diana Gabriella, you're live online. What is your question? We can do stuff like that now and get them in there and say, Oh, shit. Oh, it was funny. There was uh, this one time. I'm, try I'm not trying to extend this more and more, but there was this one time where this person called me and it's always the, I, this is going to sound extremely racist, but it's always the Indian people online that are uh, the scammers and the one time I was like this is lurking spirits paranormal how may I help you and they're like is this a business I was like this is a business and they're like I didn't call it business I was like you did call a business he's like oh sorry <laughs> click <laughs> Well, I'll answer lurking spirits paranormal. You attract them and we extract them and then I hear click. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it, it's we we can do a whole thing on the telemarketers and that too if you want. But we I have like a whole list here of different things that we can solicitors. I, I don't have any problem with the police department, but they've called me up and wanted me to donate, which I have before. I've supported our police officers. But I told him that since we bought the new house, we're kind of like financially not really set to be doing donations. And, oh, you know, you can only do $5. And I'm there, sir. Like right now, my husband, because of his job, when it rains, when it snows, he doesn't have work. And he can't, he can't even claim unemployment because we haven't been here in Pennsylvania long enough for him to meet the quarters that they need for unemployment. So, you know, it's just that... Uh, well, that's a whole other subject, and I want to keep on rambling on. But um, just like I said, if you have any comments or anything, any ideas, we've been saying this all along, please, please, just make the comment and let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about. I know one sometime in the future, it's, well, I don't know. It's, it's not as hot as what it was, but people still talk about it as Casey Anthony. Um... Gypsy Rose, we talked, we had pretty good response over that. We're here now, there's nothing confirmed, but I'm hearing that she may possibly be two months pregnant. I don't know, but we can possibly Which talk about weird, that. Which is weird, especially if that is her brother. Yeah, that's so. And then if you like us discuss more paranormal stuff like the afterlife and, um, you know, what we think of that and how we came about doing the whole paranormal thing personal experience okay sorry folks well our battery for some reason it keeps on showing that it was full and it runs out real quick we don't know why battery shouldn't run out within an hour that's just ridiculous but this is a newer camera well, we have to check into why it's doing that as we were saying if you want us to get into the paranormal um, more stuff like that and how we got into it I actually started a book about personal experiences and stuff like that. Um, I can touch base on and that in a future episode if you if you want to hear it. Um, but we've been on here about our a lot of time, a little over an hour. So if you see a little glitch in this thing, that I don't that's, think that there will be because it's like another video file. Okay, okay. So it should be the same, which is 
I think I said that on the video when, uh, yesterday when me and Eric were doing our candy thing. I don't think it's going to do that because it's another video file. But if by chance you do see a little glitch, it's, we, again, we do not edit anything and, uh, we, we tell it the way it is and stuff, but that, that's what happened. But to end this, um, considering that we were talking about, um, the controversy with Cody and Satori, I found it appropriate to end on Chinese proverb, um, Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, shame on both of us. And with that said, tune in and peace out. See you next time.